The tapestry was commissioned from two former students, Edward Byrne-Jones and William Morris. Morris is very interested in seeing how the colouring of the glass in the windows around the tapestry would influence and play with the tapestry. I think it really hits you that actually these, you know, really famous, successful, talented people are actually in the same place as you are and found inspiration here and that's something that's really, really exciting, I think. The actual tapestry is in fantastic condition, so the main work that we were involved with was surface cleaning to remove loose dirt and particulate soiling and then to reline it because the lining had been in place for a number of years and was fairly soiled and needed just to be refreshed and replaced. The biggest challenge was the size um, and Finding the right material, uh, glass was too heavy and actually could only be manufactured in one sheet would, which would have been too large to get in here. So currently we manufacture Optum Museum Acrylic up to a maximum size of approximately 3 times 1.8 meter. And although this is a fairly large size, there are artworks such as this tapestry uh, which are, are larger. And so in these cases, for oversized works, um, one sheet will not um, be sufficient to protect the object. And Small Corp, a company based um, in the US, in Massachusetts, has developed a method uh, to join uh, multiple sheets in order to protect large works. Getting it up here, we made a special A-frame uh, to go on to our uh, our truck with the tail lift, so that worked fairly well and then it was just a question of manoeuvring it through the exterior doors of the chapel because they were slightly smaller than the height of the sheet so that was a bit of a challenge but everything's worked out very well. The frame is fixed on the wall so we're having to load the glazing from the front rather than dropping it in to a frame as we would normally do. So that created quite a few challenges which we had to study and then come up with a procedure uh, which we followed fairly accurately. Framing really can make or break a work, both in terms of the aesthetics and how it looks and appears to the viewer, but also um, in terms of conservation and preserving it for the future. Good conservation framing sort of really helps towards sort of a good preservation of the object, so it prolongs uh, the period where the object can then just sit on display without having then further intervention from conservators. The importance of this piece now can be seen in as close to its original condition. The, the former glass was quite opaque and was glued together in the middle by a seam which we now don't see, so you can begin to see some of the intensity and the beauty of the craftsmanship. Seamed Optium is really a fantastic solution in that it protects the work, it filters UV out which is one of the main damaging factors. Um, it's incredibly clear, it doesn't reflect the light so it, it, it's almost as if it's not there which is ultimately what you're trying to achieve. I think the tapestry is looking really really fantastic. Um, it's, such a, it's such an obvious change uh, between how it looked before and how it looked now. The colours are so much more vivid, the lines are so much clearer. Because it's uh, the first seamed optium uh, installed in the United Kingdom and it's also a very uh, special artwork so we're very excited about it. This tapestry is, is in some ways a crescendo of, of a, an artistic movement trying to understand God in nature and God in good craftsmanship. So I think it's vitally important that today we are still working in that spirit by making sure that we have the best way of conserving it and using it so that both ourselves and future generations can, can relish in this tapestry and perhaps get a glimpse of something beyond our everyday life.